Welcome to Tech Blueprint, a window that lets you know the latest technology news in the world. No one could have imagined that China's actions would devastate the global chip industry. In 2025, China suddenly cancelled hundreds of billions of dollars in chip orders from American companies. Qualcomm, Intel, and AMD stock prices plummeted overnight, factories shut down, warehouses overflowed, and executives were furious. The United States, which once arrogantly restricted technology exports to China, finally tasted the backlash. Even more shockingly, China showed no fear. Its domestically produced chips accelerated their breakthrough. BYD, Huawei, and SMIC collectively launched efforts achieving full mass production of 28 nanometers technology and imminent breakthroughs in 14 nanometers. A major semiconductor reversal, led by China, is unfolding rapidly. American chip giants suffered a devastating order cut. China's strike was precise and ruthless, piercing the aorta of the American semiconductor industry. In just a few months, the once proud American chip giants have gone from high tech legends to protagonists of financial disaster films. The stock market crashed first. Intel's stock price plummeted to a 16 year low, AMD's quarterly revenue plummeted 35%, and Qualcomm's layoffs were reported one after another. The office atmosphere was even more desolate than a weekend in Silicon Valley. That's not all. Take a look at their production lines. They used to run 24-7, their robotic arms dizzying, but now they only operate two or three days a week, and there are more cleaning ladies than engineers. The chips piled in the warehouses aren't just a few boxes or crates, but entire silicon mountains of unsaleable chips. As they sit, they get damp, oxidize, and become scrapped ultimately having to be sadly disposed of as electronic waste. Why is this happening? In a word, China isn't buying anymore. China used to account for nearly 40% of the world's annual chip production capacity, especially for high-end computing chips, AI training cards, and automotive semiconductors, which were almost entirely monopolized by major Chinese and American manufacturers. American companies happily counted their profits for over a decade, never considering that their biggest customer could just walk away. As a result, once China withdrew its orders, the US chip industry was like a giant whose lifeblood had been suddenly drained. It wasn't just a cold, it was a direct ICU stay. In recent years, the US has been aggressive, restricting ASML from selling lithography machines to China, forcing TSMC to cut off supplies to Huawei, and co-opting Japan and the Netherlands to form a chip blockade alliance, all with an air of I'm going to strangle you to death. But they may have forgotten that the Chinese are the last to be threatened. The more you hold us back, the more we'll do it, if you don't sell, I'll make it myself. The result? Chinese chips weren't crushed, instead, they bucked the trend. SMIC's 28 nanometers process achieved stable mass production, and its 14 nanometers process began to gain momentum. Huawei's Kirin chips made a comeback in the 5G market, and BYD even developed and produced its own MCUs and IGBTs. Once China could feed itself, what would be the first thing it did? It would completely eliminate existing orders, especially those from the US. They once arrogantly believed that China, the world's factory, couldn't do without Western chips, without Chinese lithography machines, Chinese EDA software, and Chinese high-end GPUs. They couldn't even make a decent mobile phone. The result? Reality delivered a resounding slap in the face. The truly addicted, and unable to break free, are precisely the Western chip giants, who believe they control everything. Let's look at the data, 
China consumes 54% of the world's chips annually. Smartphones, laptops, servers, smart cars, AI computing cards, IoT devices, which isn't a chip money eater. A high-end electric car uses over 5,000 chips. An intelligent computing center relies on tens of thousands of accelerator cards. And a cloud service provider is backed by data centers crammed with servers. If these chips can't be sold, how will Western semiconductor companies, with their high investment and extensive R&D, recoup their costs? Do they really think they can survive on the tepid European market or sporadic orders in Southeast Asia? The reality is far harsher than they imagined. Annual chip demand growth in the European market is less than 5%, and the average device replacement cycle is getting longer and longer. Southeast Asia is facing a lack of volume and price, and Chinese manufacturers are steadily encroaching on the low and mid-end markets. Latin America and Africa Come on, those places don't even have full 4G coverage, so how can we talk about high-end chip consumption? As for the automotive chips, and IoT chips so hyped up by the West, they are simply red ocean markets with thin margins, low barriers to entry, and fierce competition. Intel and Qualcomm can't expect to maintain their trillion-dollar market capitalizations by simply selling washing machine chips and smart meter chips, can they? China is not only reducing imports, it's also going it alone, ensuring its own prosperity. Huawei's Kirin chips are making a strong comeback, SMIC's 28 nanometers process yield has exceeded 90%, BYD's self-developed IGBT and MCU chips are already powering millions of electric vehicles overseas, and Changshan storage storage chips are no longer just domestic substitution, but have truly penetrated the global supply chain. Even AI chip companies like Cambrican and Horizon Robotics have carved out a niche in autonomous driving and edge computing. 28 nanometers. In full mass production, a sure thing. 14 nanometers. Already rolled off the production line on a small scale, with yield rates improving. 7 nanometers. With all our might, no one dares to say China can't catch up. Most excitingly, China has officially designated EUV lithography, once firmly in the hands of the West, as a major national science and technology project. The more others say, you can't make it, the more China wants to make it and see for itself.